Hi everyone, Corey Barker here and welcome back to the Photoshop Master FX official YouTube channel. Now in this week's video, we are going to take a look at Hollywood yet again. Um, we're going to take a look at the Captain America title effect. Now it's very, um, quite simple to do in 3D in Photoshop. Uh, immediately when I saw it, of course, I started playing around with it and uh, got a really good result with it. And of course, the movie itself is really quite good. If you haven't seen it yet, I do encourage you to check it out. Um, if you're into comic book movies, that is. Um, it definitely is really good and is a great installment to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's a lot of really cool things happening in there. But in this video, we are dealing with cool type effects. So we're going to create the title effect um, using 3D entirely here inside Photoshop. And it yet it demonstrates yet again um, how far you can really go with 3D in Photoshop. I know a lot of people are still a little on the fence about whether or not they want to invest the time in learning 3D in Photoshop. And I, and I tell you, it doesn't take a massive investment in learning. If you already are familiar with Photoshop, um, you're already halfway there. It's just a matter of rethinking um, a few things and just trying out and experimenting with a few things to, um, to really get some uh, really cool effects without having to invest a lot of time in a really complex 3D application. So let's take a look at this. Now I've gone ahead and already set the, the base text layers for this effect here. And I've got two uh, layers that you can see right here. One is, of course, the Captain America title in the foreground. And then we've got the words uh, Civil War here in the background. And we're going to start with these, um, the background word here first, which is the Civil War. Now, if I double click and highlight this, you'll notice this is a, it's a font. It's actually part of the Typekit family. So if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you uh, can access this font uh, by going into your type menu and then going to this, um, this item right here, Add Fonts from Typekit. And the font is called Industry Ultra, as you can see right here. Now, I've altered it slightly. The characteristics of the font were what I was looking for, but the shape wasn't quite what I needed. So if I go into the character panel here, you'll see where I have adjusted the height of the uh, text. I increased it by 125%. And then I narrowed it by squeezing it in at 75% on the um, horizontal uh, um, scale there. And that gives me the more vertical text that I'm looking for. It still maintains the characteristic, uh, characteristics of the original type, only we've changed the shape. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to add a texture to this after we've created it um, into 3D, and that's just going to be this simple con cracked concrete texture here. So we'll get to that in just a moment. But for the time being, let's go ahead and uh, create the 3D elements here. Now I'm going to turn the background layer off um, just for the sake of visibility for the moment. And with that text layer selected, we're just going to simply go to the 3D menu and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. And you see it goes ahead um, as usual. It extrudes it and... Also, as usual, it extrudes it more than I need it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my properties and 3D panels here. Now I've got the text item selected here in the 3D panel. And I'm going to go over here to the extrusion depth and really bring that down to a really small number. Let's do about 50, I think. And just to get an idea of how it looks, I'm just going to grab the current view and my 3D rotate tool and just give us a little bit of a turn here. And I can see even that still is a little thicker than I want it to be. So let's go ahead and drop that down to about 20. And I think that works pretty well. Okay. So I'm going to go back down here in the 3D panel, hit default camera, brings me back to that front facing view there. Another thing I do not need in this case is the ground plane shadow. So I'm going to go into my environment property in the 3D panel right here, and then go right down here to the ground plane settings. And you'll see that there is the setting for the opacity for the shadow. So I'm just going to set that to zero. Now, here's a little bit of a bug I noticed. When I set it to zero, you'll see it gives me this kind of moiré pattern on the 3D object. Um, if I move it around, you can see that little moiré pattern kind of interacting there. If you don't want to see that, it doesn't really do anything. It's just a visual thing. It doesn't affect the quality of your 3D object. But if you don't want to see it regardless, if it is in fact doing it on your machine, um, just set your opacity of that shadow instead of to zero, set it to one. Now here's another bug. If I hit one, it actually goes to zero. I don't know why it does this. So hit two and then do that. And then you'll get, uh, you'll see the more go away and the, and the um, shadow is pretty much gone. It's only there at 1%. So since this is going to ultimately end up on a black background anyway, it's really not a big deal. But if you are running into that, that is how to deal with it. 
Now, back to our main object. So I'm going to select the Civil War text, and let's go into the Properties panel, and I'm going to go to the Cap section right here, which is the third tab at the top. Here, I'm going to set the Bevel Width to 5, and go ahead and leave that like it is. Everything looks fine. And that looks good. So now, let's go in and start adding some texturing. Now, if I turn the uh, background layer off, we can see it a little bit better now. So, um, I've got the front inflation material selected here in the 3D panel, just under the main um, Civil War object. And I'm going to go to the Diffuse property and just create a new texture. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make it the same size as the original document, which is 2,000 by 1,000 pixels, and click OK. And there is my new document. Now, I'm going to go back to that texture I showed you a moment ago, and I'm just going to simply drag and drop it into this texture file for the front inflation. I'm going to press T, uh, Command T, and then Command 0, and that's going to... Oh, it is the right width. All right, so everything looks good. So just position that. Go ahead and close this document and save the changes, and then you will see the object updated with the texture on there. Now, we see the texture fine and everything like that. I actually want it to have a little bit... A little, be a little bit darker, for one, and have some color to it. So let's go back into that diffuse property and that into that diffuse texture file. And let's give the background layer a color fill. Now, I want, I want it to be a dark color. I don't want it to be black, though. So I'm going to go with a kind of dark, really dark blue color here. Maybe that. Not. You know, let's go a little bit darker. There, something like that. So really dark, but uh, not quite black there. And I'm going to reselect the concrete layer, and let's drop the layer opacity to like 70. Well, no, let's do like 50. Not like 50%. Okay, there we go. So, background filled with a very dark blue color. Drop the layer opacity to 50%. We'll close that and save the changes. And there we go. Now, it's still bright, and that's because of the image-based light and everything we got here. So, And we've also got this infinite light that's uh, kind of pushed on there. We'll change that in just a moment. But the texture is in place and looks pretty good. Now, what I want to do is apply that same texture to the other surfaces of this text, uh, namely the bevel and the extruded sides there. So before I do that, let's go in here and uh, let's bump up the shine and reflection just a little bit so it has a little bit of uh, interaction there. And I'm going to select the front bevel material, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the extrusion material as well. And with them both selected, we're going to go to that diffuse property down here and then simply choose that front inflation material, and it will apply that same texture to all those sides, as you can see right there. There we go. Now, I'm going to reselect that front bevel and just give it a considerable... Uh, considerably more shine and reflection than the other surfaces there. And the extrusion will just give about the same as the front uh, inflation there. There we go. Now, I'm going to change this infinite light um, to a point light. So if you'll notice, I've got the light selected here in the light section of the 3D panel. Go over to the properties panel and then just change this to point light. And I like the point light because it's, it's, it's one fixed, it's not a fixed point, but it's, it's shining light in all directions. Um, but you can actually move it around and you get really dramatic effects with it. Notice as I get it closer to the text, it really kind of focuses in the light a little bit more. And I can get a really dramatic result there. So I'm actually going to position this up above. So it looks like a little bit of a light source coming from the top there. And that looks pretty good. Now... One more thing is the image-based um, light, the IBL. Now, if I when I select the environment property, you'll notice there you can see the IBL, um, the default one. It's just this uh, gray file with a bunch of white dots on it. Actually, we're going to go in there and change that. So go to the um, little menu here and choose Edit Texture. And the first thing is I want to change the size. and I want to make it bigger so I can see what's going on here. So I'm going to make this, instead of 512, I'm just going to double the size by making it 1024 on the width. And we'll click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this document with black. And then all I'm going to do is add a couple of simple gradients here. So I'm just going to um, use my gradient tool, foreground to transparent, 
uh, radial gradient is fine. And I'm going to press D then X to make white my foreground color. And I'm just going to bring a gradient in from the side here and then put a little tiny one right there. Maybe not quite that big, something like that. And that's all I'm going to do. So close that, save the changes. And if I go and move this light around, you'll see how it interacts on the beveling. You know, you know, we increase the amount of shine and reflection on the bevel, so you'll see it a lot more on that as I move this light around here. But the light is interacting on this in a very good way. Okay. All right, so we're looking good so far. We've got the Civil War text, and it's dressed with the texturing and all that stuff. So let's move on to the other text element before we uh, merge these two together. So I'm going to turn that other 3D layer off for the moment, and let's concentrate on the main Captain America title. Now I am going to increase the space between the letters there. I'm just double-clicking the layer and highlighting it, and then just press Option, right arrow, and that increases the amount of space between the letters there. And there we go. Okay. Now, like before, we're going to go ahead and do, and now actually, I'm going to actually do a save here real quick. Let's save this before we go and convert more 3D here. So now, go to the 3D menu and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And it goes ahead, like before, extrudes it. Let's turn the background layer off so you can see. Again, I'm going to rotate the camera around. Now you can see quite a a big extrusion again on that so we're actually gonna you need to uh, drop that down a little bit so I'm gonna select the main text item here in the 3d panel and then right down here in the extrusion depth we're gonna drop that to something like 15 so it's really uh, got some depth to it but not too much there and let's go ahead and just hit the default camera get that back in there now we're going to get creative with some beveling. I want to have a bevel on this text, but I want it to be a little bit different. I want to actually be able to carve it in a very interesting shape here. So let's go into the 3D um, panel, select the text item, and then over in the properties panel, <clears throat> we're going to go over here to the cap section, which is the third tab over yet again. And right here we're going to set the width of our bevel to 20. And you can see it gives me that beveled edge on there. But we want to change the shape of that bevel because it's right now it's just at a, a standard 45 degree bevel and I don't really want it. I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting than that. So click on this little contour menu here and you can add control points to this curve and change the contour of your bevel here. So if I give this a little bit of just like an angle like this, and that's all I'm going to do to it, I'm going to click OK, and there I get a little bit more interesting shape on my text there. Now I'm also going to go down here to the inflate section just below, and I want to give it a little bit of a curve on that front face just so it, um, so it will uh, reflect the, the IBL we're going to add a little bit more later on. So go down here to the strength setting, and set that to 3. And let's go ahead and set the angle to a higher number. Let's do that to 75. And you can see how it's kind of bulged out the front face of that, uh, that text there a little bit. And notice, too, our bevel is a little bit more interesting. It's got uh, kind of a, several levels there. And that's looking really good. Okay. Now. I'm not going to do the IBL or anything like that because what we're going to do is merge this layer with the other layer and it's just going to pick up the characteristics of that IBL um, once we do that. So let's go in here and actually modify some of the coloring here. So we've got the red color, which I want the front face of the text to be. Um, and it picked that, went ahead and picked that up uh, just fine. But I do not want the bevel or the extrusion to be that red color. So I'm actually going to go and select those individually and create new textures. Now I could go ahead and click on the swatch right here and just pick a new color. I like to go ahead and have a document in the event I want to add a texture or in something else in that um, as well. And, um, and I can change that anytime I want. Um, I'm just going to give this kind of a lighter gray fill. And let's go ahead and close that, save the changes. 
And let's go ahead and select the extrusion and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a new texture, maybe a little bit darker gray on that one. There we go. Now, with each of these, I'm gonna add some reflection properties. So I'm gonna go and select the front infl inflation material first and go down here to the shine and reflection. And let's go ahead and just increase these. Now, once I do that, you're immediately gonna see the default image-based light appear in that reflection there. <clears throat> so I've got the shine and reflection. Um, put them in, putting them around 50 will be fine. And then I'm gonna go over here to the specular setting right here. I'm gonna click on that swatch and just make that a little bit brighter color. Now notice as I go brighter and brighter, the, the much brighter the specular highlight gets. Won't, don't wanna go too crazy. Just make it a little bit lighter gray here. And that looks good. Then, the front bevel, I want it to shine and reflect more of the environment. So I'm going to actually give it a higher amount of shine and reflection here and an even brighter specular highlight. So it looks like it's kind of got like a, like it's bordered with a kind of a metal look to it. And then the extrusion material, roughly the same thing. I'm actually going to give it uh, about the same settings as the front inflation, just um, kind of a midway reflection and shine and then a, a mild specular highlight there. There we go. As I move it around, you can see how it's picking up the image-based light, the default one, of course, and it's giving me that kind of light effect on there. Not too bad. All right. So let's go back and hit default camera. Bring it back to the front view there. There we go. And let's go ahead and turn the background on and the other text layer here. Now, like I said, um, I need to merge these together so that they interact with each other so that this text will cast a shadow on the text behind it. But also, when you merge two 3D layers together, they're going to assume the properties of whatever layer um, it has below. What I mean is, when I merge this layer to this layer below, it's going to pick up the IBL and whatever lighting I've applied to the, la to the lower layer. Um, similar to the way when you merge two layers that have layer styles, it's going to pick up the whatever properties on the layer below. Same thing here. So I'm simply going to go ahead and press Command E or Control E if you're on Windows. That's going to merge these two layers together, as you can see. And by doing that, it immediately picked up the lighting of the layer below. Now, notice, even though they're merged in the same 3D layer, there are still separate items here in the 3D panel. So I'm going to grab the Captain America text, and let's just slide that forward. Uh, there we go. And let's go ahead and scale it down. Just a little bit, there we go. And once again, I'm gonna grab current view and move this around to see what my distance is from the other text there, and I think that looks pretty good. So again, I'll just hit default camera here. And let's zoom in here. Now I'm gonna grab the environment property, and if I go in here and move this around, notice how it, and the light now interacts with everything. It's interacting with the text, um, the Captain America text, and the other text behind it and giving me a really interesting result there. So, and again, this is where you get to the point where you're just kind of trying different scenarios and moving the lights around until you get something that you um, really like. And I'm just going to nudge the text up here just a little bit there, something like that. Now I'm gonna go back to the Civil War text here just for a moment and go back to that front inflation material because what I wanna do is have that texture stand out a little bit more. Even though it's it's a nice, rough, concrete texture, it looks like a picture of a concrete texture on that text. It's, it seems flat, even though it seems to be a... It's a picture of a texture. It doesn't have texture. So, in order to give it that little, almost kind of tangible roughness to it, go down here to the bump property. Well, when you have the front inflation material selected here in the 3D panel, go over to the properties panel and go to that bump property and go to this little menu here and choose that front inflation material we've already applied. And that's going to apply it at now as a bump map. As you can see right now, the texture got much rougher and looks a lot different. So what we're going to do is just bring that setting, that bump setting, down to about one. Yeah, maybe even. Let's go like two. But uh, The point is you want to have it at a small number just so it's... Uh, so, just so the texture stands out enough but is, is subtle enough where it kind of doesn't... Um, make it too messy there. So now you can see how good our text looks against the other objects there. So hit that default camera once more. 
And I'm actually going to go and give that point light. Remember the point light we created earlier? We positioned it right above. That I'm going to give a little bit of a color here. Let's give it kind of a, uh, kind of a bright blue color. Just so it has that little bit more of a cinematic look to it. I think that looks pretty good. And one last thing I'm going to do is go to the current view, select current view here, and go in here to the camera properties. Now, of course, if you're coming from photography, you know that the lower number of millimeter lens you have, the wider angle you get. Same principle here. In this field of view setting here, you'll notice it's measured in millimeter lenses. I'm going to set this to 10, and that's going to give me a much dramatic angle. Now, push the object back in space because of the changing of the lens, basically. So I'm just going to, again, with current view still selected, use my drag 3D tool here, which is the second to the last one, the slide 3D camera. Click and drag down. Now, I'm holding the shift key so it stays center, but click and drag down, and it brings the object closer. Seems like it's scaling it. But what it's actually doing is just um, moving the camera closer to the object there. Now, as we do this, you'll notice we see at a much wider angle the edges of the text here. Now, what that means is, what that tells me, is I need to go in here and maybe adjust the extrusion depth a little bit on a couple of things. Let's bring, let's bring the Civil War extrusion down to about 15. Remember, we had it at 20. And... For this text, let's make this 10 instead of 15. There, there we go. And I think I'm going to scale this just a little bit more as well. Now, go back to that light, that point light. Remember when we changed it, changed it to that lighter blue right here? I'm actually going to go dial that intensity down. Um, let's go with... It was going to bring it down like 10%. Like 80. What I am going to do is also bring the softness. See the shadow setting down here? The softness is by default at zero, which means when it renders, it's going to render this shadow that you're seeing being cast on the Civil War text uh, with, a, with a harder edge. I want it to actually be more of a softer edge, so let's go ahead and increase this to about 25. And there we go. And what I can do now is start to uh, render and just see what we're going to get um, in our final uh, result here. So I'm just going to hold down Shift Option Command and press R and it's going to go ahead and start doing the render and again I've had this question numerous times when it starts rendering it gets really fuzzy as you can see right there especially in the shadow areas that is normal each time it makes another pass it's refining the image that much more so it's not degrading the quality it's actually going to start out especially when you've got soft shadows and reflections you're going to see that graininess quite a bit, at least in the start. Then as it progresses, you're going to see it get a little bit more detailed in there. And uh, you can cancel the render anytime by, by hitting the escape key, and I can see that I'm looking pretty good um, with the overall render there. And that is pretty much it. So that's pretty much how you go about using 3D in Photoshop to create a cinematic title effect, in this case, from uh, Captain America Civil War. Now, the original, of course, had it looking straight on like this, but I just wanted to show you a little bonus in what you can do. Um, once you have a 3D effect built in Photoshop, you're not stuck with just one angle of it. Like, for instance, if I wanted to go and look at this at a more dramatic angle, um, I can go and get my camera, current view, and let's rotate this around and perhaps get really dramatic close-up angle on it. And here you can see the, the detail of the edge of the text. And you see how that bevel's got that really cool kind of metal uh, look to it. You could barely tell it was there when you're looking at it the other way. But just by giving it a little bit of a turn, you can put, um, produce more detail in it. Um, especially when you want to see what you've done with the 3D and everything like that. So when I've done that, uh, that might require me to adjust my image-based light here. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Maybe adjust that lighting just a little bit. Something like that. Now, another thing you can do, and this is one of my favorite things about Photoshop, is to add that one little, one more level of realism to it. With that current view selected, remember where we adjusted the field of view here for that 10 millimeter lens? Just below that, you have the depth of field settings. And if I go in here and set the depth to just one, you'll see a, and a blur immediately appears in the object. Notice how it's not blurry back here, though? 
So it's establishing a depth of field effect. Now to set the focal point, um, you just simply hold down the option key and you'll see a target appear in place of your cursor. And all you do is simply click on the image where you want it to be in focus. You notice it shifted the focus here to the, forward, to the front area and it's a little more blurred in the background there. Now when I do a render, I'm going to obviously see more grain because we've now created a blur effect in that background, but also you're going to see a much more realistic depiction of the text because it has depth of field. It's going to have that realism of being um, close to you and being in focus. The cool part is you can set that focal point anywhere you want it to be. If I wanted it to be way back here, I can just go ahead and option click back there, restart the render. But so many different things you can do with your 3D designs once you've created them in uh, being able to choose different angles and even different lighting. And of course, one of the very best parts, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to the default view here before we finish up here, is we've created all this um, this element here. And if you want to say you got to this point, you're thinking, well, you know, the title changed or maybe I misspelled something or whatever like that. So what you can do is remember, these are still editable text items. So let's just say I wanted to change uh, the Captain America title itself. Um, or let's just say I wanted to cater this to my site. Let's say I wanted this to say Photoshop Master Effects in the background. Or, 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 or the other way around. Actually, let's do that real quick. So let's say I wanted to make the Civil War text the Photoshop text. So if I select the item in the 3D panel, go to edit, so click on the edit source button in the properties panel there, and you'll be in that original file, and all you got to do is just retype the new text, close the document, save the changes. It updates with all of that information, all the texturing and everything you've done. You don't have to do that all over again. Same thing with the other uh, text layer. If I go in there and choose that, open it up, and we'll just type master effects. And that's all there is to it. Close it, save the changes. Now I have all those properties, and everything's looking good. And now I've got that entire effect for my own brand or whatever you wanted to apply it to, if you're whatever project you're working on. But now I have that effect, and I didn't have to go back and redo it all over again. I built it um, in its original form, and then I was able to go in there and edit the text and generate a whole new effect there. So I'm just going to get this in position, set my depth of field once again, and let's just set the focal point right here in the foreground. And I'm going to go ahead and start another render there. And that is the Captain America title effect entirely in Photoshop. Thank you guys again for joining me here on the official Photoshop Master Effects YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to check out the main site, photoshopmastereffects.com, uh, to find out more about the premium tra training I offer on a weekly basis. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time.